When we started uh, the campaign, uh, which was an idea of the Advisory Council on Youth, uh, which said that young people want to do something against hate speech online, because human rights don't only count in the offline world, but human rights do also count in the online world. So something needs to happen, because we have seen that uh, 78% of young people are online constantly, uh, and unfortunately human rights are not always respected online, and that's why we came up with this idea. The Advisory Council advised to the Joint Council on Youth to do this. And where do we stand now? I, I, we are happy to see as Advisory Council and Joint Council on Youth that we finally have a movement, that we can speak about a no hate speech movement, a movement represented in more than 38 countries, which is a great success. Um, that we see that we have uh, great educational tools, that we have national strategies to combat hate speech, and that we have many, many, many young people all around uh, Europe that simply say no, no uh, to hate speech, no to accept discrimination online, and at least have the guts not to look away, but to react. And that's what I think it's very important where we stand now, that the movement is alive and kicking. The campaign is currently planned to end, sadly, on the 31st of March next year. But we will be having an evaluation conference and a follow-up work that will be done. We will be maintaining our platform for the national campaigns until the end of 2015. And we will be looking at what we can develop as a lasting legacy of the campaign. And this is what makes up some of our strategic objectives in the campaign, which are to try and obtain uh, perhaps a permanentization of the hate speech watch, which is currently on the website. We'd like to make that a permanent observatory. We would like to see developed a new recommendation of the Committee of Ministers on hate speech. We would like to uh, encourage and push for more and more ratifications of the additional protocol to the Euro Council of Europe's Convention on Cybercrime. So we have some very uh, fundamental legal type uh, projects that we would like to see, objects that we would like to see, objectives that we would like to see realized and they will be the fruits of this campaign. Uh, the most important aspect of the work we develop is that we organize the European Action Days. So we work together with Laszlo, who coordinates the team, and we have, ev for every Action Day, there is a team, a preparation team, and throughout, during a month, a month and a half, we prepare the material and we define the strategy for that specific European Action Day. So our task is to create promotional material uh, and to validate reports for the Hate Speech Watch, which is a feature for um, reports of instances of hate speech online that exists on the website and uh, as well motivating, trying to motivate uh, people, not just ourselves, <laughs> to um, send reports spe uh, specific to the each action day and then sometimes we try to define strategies on how to deal with some of these reports. The activists choose a couple of them and then we try to think of a specific action on how to, to react to it. I'd just like to name one of the fruits of this campaign which is currently in the process of being realized and that is uh, the whole campaign started because of the events that happened on the 22nd of July in 2012 and we are now working towards making the 22nd of July uh, the European Day for victims of hate crime in memory of all the young people who lost their lives on the Isle of Utøya in Norway on the 22nd of July. And with work uh, in combination with our campaign managers in Norway and the work that we've been doing at the level of the Council of Europe, we now have some institutional support for that from the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And we're hoping that we will realize this ambition, which will be just one of the lasting legacies of this campaign. It's a bit uncertain at this point. We don't, that's exactly what we will be doing in this meeting. And next meeting that will take place in December and still another that will take place sometime next year. Uh, but the point is precisely that we um, stay connected because I mean, in the end this is a, a huge network of activists and people who have learned how to use social media and have become sort of experts in their own way. And so Probably, I'm guessing possibly, we will still be connected to the Council of Europe and we will be helping with other social media campaigns. I'm guessing this is one possibility. Or joining a pool of trainers because we also have been trained in ourselves being facilitators 
for non-formal education training. Campaign um, is it, it looks very bright. I think we have a lot of young people and uh, uh, policymakers that are involved in this process. Uh, it's very clear that we have enough educational tools. It's very clear that within the Council of Europe, it's our role to, 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 to strive that we have a recommendation from the Committee of Ministers. It's important that we uh, have the Parliamentary Assembly supporting this event. So on different levels, European to local, things are happening. And the future of the movement should be one where um, we have a big group of people that keep on reacting against hate speech. We cannot keep silent. And if we can keep that part alive, that's a great success already.